Vlog family, uh, welcome once again. If it's your first time to watch our videos, don't forget to subscribe and also like the video, share and leave a comment. All right. Uh, most of the times I've, I've heard people commenting a lot about my uh, Yeah, people comment a lot about my titles and uh, I remember most of my titles I would put uh, Black Acres of the Gambia, Black Seat, but more generally most of my titles are addressing to African Americans, Afro-British and uh, also Afro-Caribbeans. And uh, many people have asked why do you always uh, title your videos like that. Um, when I started my YouTube channel, the main um, aim of the channel was uh, for me to talk more about my business, about my um, cement block machines and my property. But I discovered that um, it was not getting a very, it was not getting an audience if I did that. Until when I discovered the activities going on in West Africa and I found a new audience. So the audience was actually the diasporans. I found out that my message appeals a lot to the um, diasporans. In fact, my YouTube channel at the moment, 70% of the subscribers, maybe even more than 70%, they are from their diasporans. So which means that um, whatever I am doing is actually appealing to uh, diasporans. I think, um, the reason why what I do appeals to them a lot is because I am sharing information that helps somebody who is not very much familiar with how things go in Africa will be able to get some information from my channel. And another thing is also I think they can relate to my presentation of whatever I'm doing because um, my thinking it's actually um, normally I, I don't I, I think in a way of trying to find solutions other than thinking a way and trying to look for uh, challenges. You will find that most of the people when they're sharing information, they're always talking about the negatives of or the negative uh, aspects of whatever they want to discuss about. Uh, with me, I'm always looking into the positive aspects of whatever I want to talk about. So if I'm talking about um, development in Africa or what's going on in Africa, I will focus more especially on the positive side. And you know, it's a choice of that people can make whenever they want to uh, look at, at, at situation, analyze situations, you know? There's this thing they say, half empty, half full glass. You know, for some people when they see a glass that's halfway, they will say, no, it's, it's, it's half empty they will see a glass that's getting empty. Um, where, while some of, some of us will see a glass that's going towards getting full. So it all depends on how you see a situation. And for me, uh, I learned that um, in every problem uh, that we, um, uh, uh, a human being experiences, there's an opportunity for somebody to uh, make um, money, or to solve that opportunity, opportunity to solve that problem. Where, where, when you come to an environment where there's no problems, you don't have any chance to be able to do anything. I mean, like to solve the problems because there's no problems. So that's why if you are living in America, you will be having a very difficult time for you to start a business there because most of the challenges that people are facing there have already been solved or somebody else is, is busy solving them. So there's so many people who are busy solving those challenges and some of them are doing it, will do it even much more better than you, you would solve it. But when you come to Africa where there's uh, a lot of challenges, I, I mean, when people are in America, all they hear about Africa is, oh, Africa is bad, this, the roads are bad, houses are not good, customer service is poor, you know, businesses, you, 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 you go to this business, you look for something, you don't get it. If, if you try to get something, you can't get it. You know, that's all you hear. And many, very few Americans or uh, diasporans uh, 
see that as an opportunity, very few. For me, when I, when I look in my country, I actually sit down and say, what, what problems are we facing in Malawi that I can, I can solve? When I hear people uh, sit gathering and complaining, I'm, I'm having my, my ears and my eyes open so that I can listen more and so that I can see how can I be the solution to that problem. Every time, even when, we, when I was working for companies in South Africa and we are in a, in a meeting or we are in a training, when the people were talking about, uh, we were given an assignment and there's, uh, there's uh, things that people are like fumbling to think. Me, I'm always thinking of how can I be the solution to that? How can I solve that problem? I worked in the casino in South Africa. I solved, we, we just opened one of the biggest casinos in, in Africa. The, the casino was packed. We had about 1,350 1, slot machines in the casino. And... On the opening, the first weeks, or the first months of the opening, the casino was full. The casino was very big. It was almost like maybe three or four football pitches. That's a big, the casino floor, how big it was. But we were running like almost like four supervisors on the floor. And we had uh, guest service attendants who were working with us. And the casino was packed and crazy. And I remember some of my fellow supervisors used to get stressed. They would go out, go to the canteen and would smoke cigarettes because they just can't keep, keep up with what's going on. And we used to have radio wireless messages you could plug in the ears like this. And your ears, you know, when you, when you plug your headphones, you, you, you entered a new world. You know, this one is calling for a problem somewhere. This one is calling for a problem somewhere. And your name is being called four times. It was crazy. When I used to go home, I used to say, but that is actually crazy. How can I solve that problem? We as supervisors in the casino, we had to deal with disputes. So we're using a slot machine that uses a SIM card. And uh, sometimes we, what, a person, what a person does when he plays on the slot machine, he will insert his SIM card on the machine and then you take his note um, in, in, in money and slot it into the uh, slot machine. And that amount will be registered in the SIM card and also on the display. And when he starts playing, whatever he wins is registering on this display, but also that money that is winning is being uh, put into the card. But by the time the person wants to cash out or to take out the card, the, the whole amount of the credits that is won is converted into money, it's loaded in the card. So the card is almost like a, de a, a, a debit card from the bank, a bank card. So he can go to a cashier's desk in the casino, cash the money, or he can go to an ATM because there used to be casino ATMs which accepts this card, and he can go there, cash the money. And then uh, uh, next day, he can take the card home, Next day when it comes, you can set the, cash, uh, the card in, in um, the, it's called, um, it was some uh, um, systems where you put your card and you put your money in there, it loads all the money that you put in there in the card, and then you can go around play, play on the casino. But sometimes there will be transaction failures whereby the, the, man, the credits that were on the slot machine didn't go to the card. So it was our job as supervisors to go and find out. So what we do, you be called to a slot machine, you get there and then you have to uh, 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 take the details of the machine, number, machine. Each machine had a number. You take the number of the machine and then you go to the office. You start um, pulling up a report. So you pull a report for that machine and it will print out the report. Then you have to do, start doing calculations. So the problem was you will find that you have been called on the radio. And then uh, you go and uh, attend to this problem. You are, the customer is shouting and is complaining. There's no, the money is disappearing in his card. While you're doing that, in your radio, somebody's calling you on another machine. And then you're asking the person, what's the problem? It's a similar problem. Huh? So, and while that one is finishing, another one is calling you for another machine. Now you tell, you're dealing with this customer, you, you go to the office, you pull a report, you come and solve this problem. That means that other customer is still waiting because you are, you are, you are like, you are four supervisors on the floor and there's 1,360 slot machines. So if, if, if an attendant, so we used to have um, areas that we used to share as supervisors. So 
Whatever problem is happening in your area, you, you are the one who is going to solve. So I had to find a way of how to solve this problem. So I used to sit down and think at home, how can I solve this problem so that I don't struggle whenever there's a, a situation like the one that I faced there. And I realized that I needed to share some of my knowledge with the attendance in my team. So we were divided in teams. So the, the team that you had, the attendants would get used to you and then they would know, you would know who is supposed to be in my area. So what I would do, uh, during graveyard shifts in the evenings, uh, it's very quiet, the casino is quiet. You have like on the whole floor, there's like 10 uh, customers from midnight to like 7 a.m. There's like, like, there's like four customers. So during this time, I'll be teaching my team how to pull a report. So I'll tell them, okay, machine number so so, this is how you pull a report, and then this is how you, um, you bring out. So whenever there's a problem and the attendant is calling me, I'll tell the attendant, get me the report. So the attendant is going to pull the report. By the time I'm finishing with this customer, there's already a report ready for me. I check on the report. By the time I'm going to see the customer, I've already uh, uh, known what the problem is and I solved it. So it made life very easy for me. So every, every problem presents a challenge, uh, it presents an opportunity. And because of this that I was doing, um, the shift managers who were like above us, they started now liking the way I ran my shifts and uh, the attendants also, well, they, they were very comfortable with me because it, it was boring for them in the beginning because they just walk around a radio looking for problems. But now they were able to look for problems, find a problem, pull a report, and they gave it to me. And eventually I started teaching these at, at young um, um, attendants how to do the calculations so that by the time I go there, they have already found what the problem is. And me, I just authorize it. We put the money back into the customer's card. So, all the problems, all the challenges that we are facing in Africa are actually opportunities. And therefore, uh, people should always take advantage of that. So for me, um, I, I found that all the challenges that the African Americans are facing when they come here, they are actually opportunities for me. They are opportunities because now they're giving me a platform to be able to share my knowledge with them, but also and create business opportunities with them. Because one of these days, um, a lot of people know me. Because like for instance, here, uh, here in Malawi, uh, because of social media, because of trying to help people solve their problems, a lot of people know me. I'm almost like a celebrity on, on, on Facebook in Malawi. So I, I, would, I, I would like to grow this network whereby now I will, uh, I will be exposed to um, the, 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 the diaspora and community and that will create business opportunities for me in the future. So that is why you find that most of the times um, um, I have to have a target. It's almost like a business. If you have a YouTube channel, you need to have a target market, a target of audience, audience that you are targeting. Because if you say you are targeting everybody, that means your content is not going to be tailor-made uh, um, uh, uh, targeting a certain audience. So for me, because I've got an audience and my audience is diasporans, uh, my content is actually tailor-made in a sense that it attracts diasporans. So that's why I do it like that. Maybe in the future I might also include other audiences, but at the moment I'm focusing mainly with the diasporans. So um, it's not a bad thing because there's also a business opportunity. You must remember that my YouTube channel, I cannot monetize it because I don't live in a country that uh, has got YouTube partnership. So uh, are, I can only use YouTube to help me in my, with my business in the future. That's why then you'll see that most of the content is actually uh, targeting this kind of audience. Yeah, so don't forget to uh, like the video and subscribe to the channel, share the video and also leave a comment. Thank you.